This is an unboxing of a Skywatcher uh, SWA 22mm 70 degrees eyepiece. I think there is another item in this, so I'll just open it, see what is inside. Yeah, uh, uh, by the way, I ordered this from the uh, company called Northern o o Optics in the north of England. Uh, the eyepiece I got it from them is £55. Elsewhere is £99. In the eBay is £99. You cannot find it even nowadays. It's because of the coronavirus. Everything is now, the prices have shooted up. And everything is selling without having anything replaced. I ordered from another company and they couldn't deliver it because the OVL, Optical Vision Teller, uh, limited was closed so this uh, is the only place they had it and they had it as an X display 55 pound and they posted it yesterday and it now today is here so I'm really happy with the northern optics really good really nice and uh, it's X display 22 millimeter is the jewel or gem of this range of the SWI pieces from from um, Sky Watcher. So I'm looking forward to see how it looks. Let me just open it well packed, by the way. Nicely packed. Oh, look at that. That's a two inch eyepiece. Look at the size of the uh, lens. Okay, this is the cap. God, it, this is really chunky, like a Max Vision. The lens is slightly bigger than a Max Vision. I will blow some uh, with the air blower into it, so just remove the little bit of the things that came from the packaging. This is the amazing 22mm uh, Sky Watcher eyepiece. I read a lot of positive reviews about it. This is almost impossible to find it these days, unless it is at a very high price. And I was really lucky, I got it £55, free postage delivery. All the things you buy from the Northern Optics, Optics Company is free delivery. So, that's, that's impressive eyepiece, look at it. Really clear, unlike my window. And uh, I'm looking forward to using it in the, in the night. So, that's the size of my air blower. This is the size of the eyepiece. This is 2 inch, so it goes only with 2 inch and it's also screwed for the 2 inch bell, completely inside darkened to avoid reflection, astray lights, really impressive optics, clean, and you can raise the eye cap to a comfortable level is around half a centimeter came up and that's all that you need you don't need more than that and that gives you opportunity to look with your glasses without actually touching or your eyelashes touching the without touching the top surface of the eyepiece and this is a top quality i'm going to look at it tonight to see how it is and i will tell you how it looks Okay, this is the 22mm Skywatcher SWA 70 degrees eyepiece. I'm looking through the Skywatcher 150mm 6 inch refractor. And I must say the image quality is perfect, best, superb. From the corner to corner, no astigmatism, no coma, nothing. So, really impressed with the quality of this. I'm looking at the planet Venus. You through a camera, you don't see the crescent. In the video especially because I cannot adjust the setting light should be less so it can capture the shape of the crescent but anyway it's good I'm telling you it's good visually I can see clearly from corner to corner okay I'm using the Sky Watcher SWA 22 millimeter 70 degrees on the moon now uh, it's the 16 day moon and it's superb view I've, I've rarely seen such a clarity with any eyepiece this is the gem 
of this French and I'm using the of course the sky watcher six inch refractor a chromatic and this is the 1200 focal length You can see the Owens Bridge in the lower part of the image, Mare Crescia. That's the Oven Bridge you see again. Kind of dimming and uh, unfocusing is because of the use of the autofocus. Okay, I'm now looking through the uh, Max Vision 24 millimeter, 82 degrees eyepiece. I must say the image is crisp. Video is nothing compared to what you can see visually. Probably is around just showing to twenty percent of the visual uh, sharpness of what is actually visible. Okay, I must say that uh, the Sky Watcher 22 millimeter is better than the Max Vision 24 millimeter. This is 70 degrees, that is 82 degrees. Why I'm saying that? There is a tiny star, binary star, to the toward the Chrysium side of the moon, disk of the moon, and that tiny star as the spikes when you look at it with the max vision 24 millimeter but with this sky watch a 22 millimeter is sharp crisp image and what i can see is this is binary star is one of them is blue the fainter one is blue the brighter one is yellow orange or more yellow uh, it's one of these hd stars i think uh, let me look on the name of the star that is called beta scorpii or um, Akrab uh, in Arabic meaning uh, scorpion or Graphias which is I think in Greek or Latin means clouds. Uh, I was suspicious that actually it is three stars and I was, my, my suspicion was confirmed 
It's not two stars. Two, two stars is the visible one. You see one blue, one uh, yellow. Uh, but the bigger one, brighter one, which is yellow, has another companion, which is uh, interesting. Both of them are 10 mass, uh, though these two brighter stars of this binary system are uh, 10 times more massive than our sun, and they may end up soon as a supernova. That's very interesting. Uh, I don't know, I can try to catch it. Anyway, I try to photograph it. Uh, the moment I breathe, it <laughs> just my hands shake and uh, even uh, the camera also shakes. So you can easily see the pair of the Messier craters on the moon. That's beautiful. I can see one of them is actually oblong, oval shaped. Okay, all the eyepieces I've seen, almost all of them show the stars a little bit spiky. A few exist as max vision. Uh, 40 millimeter one but this one is one of those ones that shows no spikes every star is circular you can almost see the iris disc <laughs> so this 22 millimeter sky watcher SWA is amazing eyepiece it's a gem it's a jewel in the crown of the sky watcher eyepieces I'm looking at the Taurus Litro I looked with the 8mm eyepiece. I always wondered why they chose the Taurus Litro for the Apollo 17. Uh, I always thought that there is something special about that. First of all, it has a very dark surface, that area of the mountains and the graben. The graben part of it is very dark, almost like the uh, some areas which are covered in the lava uh, or, or pyroclastics in the uh, outer parts of the Mount Apennine, uh, Mare Medi, some sort of kind of name like that. Uh, and I always wondered why it is like that, and why they chose that. Then gradually I was looking at the results of the Apollo 17. I could see that there is a Lincoln um, uh, Lee truss fault there. But actually, astronauts walked on it. Uh, uh, Eugene Shoemaker, no, sorry, uh, Eugene Schmidt, Schmidt actually walked on that trust fault and the photograph is full of uh, rubble and rocks and such things. There's not sand, uh, soil, or earth like material, it's not fine grained, it's very uh, kind of full of rubbles and uh, rocks and boulders. And uh, of course, that is uh, that Lincoln Lee. And now f I understand that is a continuation of the trust fault, which goes north toward the landing site of one of the lunar huts. And uh, that is also a trust fault, but is we know it in lunar terminology as a wrinkle ridge. And that area of the Link uh, Taurus Litro to me is now almost like a basin, expanding basin, a few truss faults surrounding it, but the actual part of it, which is those lower, darker areas, are actually a basin, a graben formed by the pooling. And what caused the pooling is not yet clear to me, but I think it must have been caused by those, it has something to do with those truss faults. If you follow the direction of the truss force and where the forces were applied and the shape of the mountains south massif and those areas it may be a clue in those ones that why this is like that but i want to come to this conclusion why they chose those areas taurus litro for the apollo 17 landing they had one option apollo 18 was cancelled i think the geologists who used that the lunar uh, mappers who used that, uh, chose that area, were brilliant geologists. They knew that there is something interesting there. There is a lot of things to be found there. It helps a lot in the uh, geology of the 
moon and they they actually pinpointed that area for the uh, yeah the first geologists go to the moon um, we don't understand a lot of material that is yet brought or the pictures but uh, we are gradually to to be there reaching there 